Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. Today we're going to talk about the top most expensive and least expensive cities in the world for expats. The context I'm going to use for this is Mercer, uh, some sort of international HR consulting firm, just released their annual list and I looked it over and to me it was uh, very bizarre in certain respects. Now. I'm going to give kind of some context around what might apply to you. They don't consider things such as taxes. I'm going to consider taxes. I'm going to tell you what I think are some of the best places to get value for your money. Uh, what some, are some of the places that are super expensive and you know, I mean, whether you want to stay there or avoid there or whatever, that's you know, obviously totally up to you. But I'm going to give you some sense of, okay, hey listen, where, can, where do these costs come from? Where can you go to optimize your costs if you're interested as an expat and get, you know, great quality in there as well. So I'm going to add quality to the equation, which is really not included in uh, this whole report. So hold on and stick to the end to uh, go through that. Now, before we do though, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. If you're at all interested in the subjects that we talk about on this channel, which are things like getting second citizenships, getting second residencies, uh, international tax planning, so paying the lowest legal amount of tax possible, optimizing your business yourself wherever you live, uh, as well as asset protection, payment processing, et cetera, et cetera, all these international investing, living, doing business subjects, please reach out to me. You can book a call with me, cardi.fm forward slash Michael Rosmer. There's a link below in the description, or you can check out our websites, offshorecitizen.net, offshorecapitalist.com. You can send us a message through there. Let's dive into it. Okay, so if I just quickly go through this list, uh, the top 10 from them are Hong Kong, uh, Ashgabat in uh, Turkmenistan. Most people probably haven't heard of it. Tokyo in Japan, Zurich in Switzerland, Singapore in Singapore, New York City, uh, Shanghai, China, Bern, Switzerland, Geneva, Switzerland, Beijing, China. Those are the top 10. Okay, so these are the ones that they're listing, and I'm going to list for you also the bottom 10. So we have Tunis in Tunisia, uh, Wintuak in uh, Namibia, Bishkek in Kyrgyzstan. Then we have Tashkent in Uzbekistan, Karachi in Pakistan, uh, Banjul in Gambia, Tbilisi in Georgia, Skopje in North Macedonia, uh, Lusaka in Zambia, and Islamaz Islamabad in Pakistan. Okay, I'm gonna go through so a bunch of these, but giving some context to this list that they put together. So first of all, it's worth noting that this is a list for expats. The whole purpose of their studies is to say, hey, listen, you are a Western country or company that is going to send your employees abroad. How should you be compensating them relative to that market because their cost of living may adjust accordingly. And it assumes that they're going to maintain the same Western, uh, I'm not going to say quality of living, but rather types of living that they get in their home country. And I'll give you a point of reference for why that's important. I just had a friend move to Bulgaria with his family and one of the things that they were observing was certain items in the grocery store that were quite expensive. And you know, on the one hand, I would say, hang on a minute, like Sofia, Bulgaria is much cheaper than Canada in a bunch of regards. But the whole point is, if you want to go buy Pringles, which are a Western product, you're going to pay more than you do in Superstore in Canada. If you want to go buy Oreos, probably the same, right? There's going to be, if you're buying the same brands that you're used to buying in your home country, then they may be more expensive in the country that you visit. So that is factored into this a little bit. Also, it assumes that uh, people are gonna live the same way. So for instance, Singapore's numbers are gonna look artificially high because they have uh, really high uh, taxes on vehicles. So your vehicle will cost you, you know, like a Prius will cost like $120,000. You know, that Lamborghini can cost, you know, up to $2 million or something like that. So their numbers here are adjusted by that. That being said, there's some really bizarre things that I found on this list. So let me give you a few as examples. So we're gonna scroll down to uh, Bangkok. Now Bangkok is their 35th most expensive city. Now I've spent quite a bit of time in Bangkok. By no means on the planet would I suggest to you that it is the 35th most expensive city. And let me illustrate for you some of the places that it says it is, that they say Bangkok is more expensive than. So Abu Dhabi, all right, you know, maybe. They're saying Dublin, Ireland, Milan, Italy, uh, Paris, France. Not a chance in the world that I think that Bangkok is more expensive than Paris. Nowhere on earth would I say that. Anyway, uh, St. Petersburg, Russia, uh, Amsterdam, Netherlands, Rome, Italy, Sydney, Australia, 
Uh, let's see here, Munich, Germany, okay. Uh, Helsinki, Finland. Oslo, Norway, this was one that stood out to my wife and I when we looked at this. Luxembourg, uh, Madrid, uh, somewhere if we get down here far enough, we're gonna come to way down at, I think it's 133 is Stockholm, Sweden, okay? Now, for those of you who haven't been, Scandinavia is not a cheap part of the world. It's, uh, it's pretty expensive. And so I find this kind of, uh, kind of bizarre to me. Uh, if we look, it just seems, just seems crazy. Anyway, so where do I think uh, would be places that would be better value? Now, there's a few things that I want to take into account, okay? Let's say that we're comparing someplace like Bangkok, right, with someplace like Sweden. All right, if I'm going to try and live as cheap as I can in both places, for sure I can get lower cost of living in Thailand than I can in Sweden. This being said, if you're a resident of Sweden, you know, being able to access the healthcare system, being able to access education, if you're thinking about things like, hey, I'm sending my kids to an international school, this changes the whole game, okay? Because I've talked to people who are spending, you know, sixty, hundred thousand dollars a year to send their kid to school in Singapore, right? This is crazy to me. I don't know why you would do that, but hey, you know, teach their own, I guess. Uh, so for me, this is like, I, I wouldn't really consider that in the numbers. And I tried to research the Mercer numbers to figure out where did they come up with theirs. As far as I can tell, it doesn't seem to account for healthcare and education, which, you know, seems like a really big thing. So that's a little bit, uh, a little bit bizarre. Obviously, the healthcare would drive the U.S. prices way up, uh, education somewhat. Uh, but some of these other places that seem cheap, if you're sending your kids to an international school versus being able to send them to a local school, of course, that's going to make a difference. So for me, some of the places that stand out as being super expensive. So I totally agree with Switzerland. Switzerland is very expensive. Uh, one place that wasn't on here is Reykjavik in Iceland. That would be typically quite expensive. Uh, Oslo, Sweden, or sorry, Oslo, Norway, terrible. Uh, Oslo and Norway to me is like one of the most insanely expensive places in Europe. Just ridiculous. Uh, to give you some idea, to take a taxi, like five minutes cost I think like 20 or 30 euros. Ridiculous. It's apparently three times as expensive as taxis in London. And you know, accommodation is not cheap, food is not cheap. They have here Copenhagen as being quite expensive. I agree, Copenhagen is very expensive. but. I don't certainly think that you can argue that Oslo is down around like, I think it's like in the 90s or something like that in terms of most expensive places. So I find it to be very expensive. In general, if you're worried about price, I would avoid Scandinavia. Now, if we add on top of that the taxes, then actually Singapore, or, uh, let's say more, Switzerland may not be so far off, right? Because the taxes in Switzerland are much more reasonable than they are in places like Sweden and Denmark, right? So, you know, that balances that out. If I was looking for the best value in, uh, what do you call it, in Europe, then certainly I would agree with some of their assessment here, which places, for example, Skopje in uh, North Macedonia, I mean, that's going to be cheaper than Belgrade for sure. Belgrade is already pretty inexpensive. Here they list Belgrade as slightly cheaper than Sofia. I would reverse it, I think Sofia is slightly cheaper and uh, the taxes are much better in Sofia than they are in uh, Serbia. So that's one thing to kind of bear in mind. Uh, certainly, I would argue that uh, one of the ones that's very bizarre on here is Kiev. Kiev, they actually rank as really expensive, uh, but you know, I would argue that's definitely not the case. You can definitely, no, you can spend quite a lot. So it's 106 on here. So to give you some idea, they list Kiev as being more expensive than Doha, Qatar, more expensive than, what are some of the weird ones here? I mean, certainly more expensive, uh, according to this, than Stockholm, Sweden, which is totally crazy to me. Uh, more expensive than Greece, uh, Athens, Greece, Montreal, Canada, Bratislava, Slovakia. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, so like we can just go down. Calgary, Canada, Tallinn, Estonia, Ljubljana, Slovenia. Um, I just disagree with uh, dis disagree with this. So anyway, that's something. Uh, if we're talking about, okay, where can we be inexpensive? I'm going to say uh, certainly in Bulgaria, certainly in Romania, certainly in Serbia. Uh, 
a little more expensive if you're looking at places like Hungary. So those would be uh, less on, on that track. If you want to go down Turkey, you can be quite inexpensive in Turkey. And the, the problem with all these places though is I think the quality of life is so-so, right? You don't get the same selection, you don't get the same uh, quality if you're looking at apartments, etc. You typically won't get as nice new places as are available in some other parts of the world, for instance, parts of the US, and I'll get to that in just a second. Let's go to Asia. Uh, certainly I would agree the most expensive place in Asia is Hong Kong. I would say Singapore is probably number two, adjusted partially because of this transport thing. Uh, I find it to be more expensive there than in Japan, but you know, again, to, uh, to each their own experience, I guess. Uh, I would say that the best value for the money anywhere in Asia right now, in fact, I think anywhere in the world is in Kuala Lumpur. Why do I think that? Uh, so here's a few things that are different about if you're in Asia versus if you're, you know, we're comparing here and they may say that, you know, Paris is not so expensive. Well, let's say I wanna go get a massage, right? So if I'm just talking about things like, okay, what am I paying for my food? What am I paying for my transport? What am I paying for my housing? Uh, what am I paying for my entertainment? Okay, you get, I, I still think you're quite a bit cheaper, uh, and especially on a quality basis in some of these Asian countries. But when you start adding the fact that you have uh, things such as uh, like services, right? Like it's very normal that you can hire somebody to be a maid or look after your kids or getting massages. I mean, you can get good quality massages in Bangkok for $10, right? What's it gonna cost you? When I was in Stockholm last time, I think it cost me like $75, something like that. You know, like just dramatically different prices. So to me, there's a quality factor there that plays out that's different. When we add the tax in, you know, I can be very tax efficient in either someplace like Thailand or someplace like uh, Kuala Lumpur. Of course, if you go over to or Malaysia in general. If you go over to Vietnam, you can get pretty low taxes there as well if you're structured properly. Uh, Philippines to some extent as well. So that whole region to me is much, much, much better value than pretty much all of Europe. Eastern Europe on a pure dollar basis, yes, can be uh, lower, but the quality that you can get is not commensurate. And I think that's just largely due to a larger market, right? If you consider that uh, I believe Kuala Lumpur is like 7.6 million people. So this is a much larger market as compared to, you know, maybe 1.5 for some place like Belgrade, right? And as a result, you have more services, you have more conveniences, et cetera, which just elevates the, the standard. The place that I think is interesting for people to look at on the flip side are these places in Canada, which actually ranked quite, uh, quite low in terms of their cost, uh, as well as possibly looking at uh, these places in, uh, in some of the ones in the US, but specifically let's look at Canada. The reason why Canada is interesting from this cost standpoint is because the dollar is down, right? Uh, and because they have a lot of space. So for instance, they list 151, very far down, is Ottawa, Canada. Uh, 146 is Calgary, Canada. Now I lived in Edmonton for a while. I haven't lived in Calgary ever, uh, but certainly, you know, what you could buy for 300,000 Canadian dollars as a house is pretty good compared to what you can get in most other places. The cost of fuel is you know, maybe half of what it is in some place like Italy. Uh, the vehicles are certainly relatively cheap. Uh, the cost of food is like, it's maybe a little bit more expensive, but as a percentage of your overall budget, that's probably not that high. Uh, where you get into trouble again uh, in Western, well, yeah, in Western Europe or in North America are the cost of labor. So yeah, those are kind of my thoughts. What I would say about this is when we account for taxes uh, and we account for quality uh, and we account for you know availability of services, et cetera, Kuala Lumpur, best value in the world as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I think that you get quite good in terms of some place like Tbilisi, Georgia. Again, the what you get is not as high, there's not as much variety, there's not as much stuff, but when you factor in taxes and the costs are legitimately very low, great, you're, you're far ahead of a lot of other places. Uh, here they listed Baku, Azerbaijan. Uh, Baku is not gonna have the taxes as efficiently, so I would throw that out. Uh, likewise, if you look at Turkey, although Turkey has pretty good for a bunch of other things, the tax regimes in Turkey are not particularly good. Uh, I think Sofia, or rather Bulgaria in general, 
is pretty good because of the tax side of it. And then as you increase your income, I did a video before if you guys want to check it out on where you should live based on the amount that you earn. Uh, you can start looking at places like Cyprus because you know the more money you make, the more that that has a proportional effect on your overall budget. On in terms of uh, expensive places, you know London uh, wasn't mentioned here, but I would say it's very expensive. I would say Paris is expensive. I would say like Switzerland, uh, basically Scandinavia, and uh, then of course Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, New York, San Francisco. So yeah, I hope that gives you kind of some idea. Uh, of maybe where you want to go, where you should look into. Uh, I guess maybe the last thing that I'll mention to you is just about, Scandin uh, is about Latin America. In my experience, I lived for three winters in Costa Rica. Uh, here it listed San Jose is quite a bit more expensive than Panama City. That certainly was not my experience uh, when I was there, but I don't find Panama or Costa Rica to be cheap at all. These are pretty expensive parts of the world. I think if you want to get lower costs in uh, Latin America, you're probably looking at some place like Mexico. Obviously, you could go to like Nicaragua is quite a bit cheaper than uh, Costa Rica, but you typically have a, a trade-off in there. So, you know, take it for what it's worth, depending on where you want to live, depending on what you want. I think uh, that's probably some of your best options. So tell me what you think in the comments. What have you noticed when you've traveled around? What are the places that are most expensive? What are places that are cheapest? Where do you find the best value for your money? And yeah, I'm going to see you guys on the next video. If you have